Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Russ Barkley, and this is the channel where boomer humor comes to die. That's right, boomer pop culture dies here. Uh, tip of the hat to Harrison Ford in the latest Indiana Jones movie. The purpose of this very short video is to answer a number of queries that I've gotten from subscribers about just how did I get into the field of ADHD. So uh, so here, here goes, uh, a bit of a story. It's not as romantic as it might sound uh, initially, but uh, here, here's the story. Uh, I had just completed my tour of duty in Vietnam with the Air Force and the 3rd Marine Division, and I wound up being stationed at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in Goldsboro, North Carolina. So I spent the last, oh, almost two years of my service there. When I got out, I then went on to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where I was studying both psychology and biology, but especially psychology. I knew, however, that if I wanted to go to graduate school in that field, which you usually have to do to be able to at least get some kind of job in that specialty, that I would need some extra research or extra credit or something that would set me apart from other applicants besides good grades. So I started wandering around the Department of Psychology and at that time no one needed a research assistant for their projects. So I then went over to the medical school just across the campus where there was a Center for Child Development and Rehabilitation uh, known as the uh, Developmental Disability Center as well. And uh, there I wandered around knocking on doors and saying, hi, this is who I am, and I'll give you 10 to 15 hours of free time as a research assistant if I can help you with your projects. And people kept saying, no, I don't need anybody right now. Oh, but there's this guy up on the third floor named Don Ruth. And Don, I believe, just got a grant to study hyperactive children. Uh, maybe he needs somebody, go talk to him. So I wandered around, uh, found Don's office, knocked on his door, and uh, offered him my time. And lo and behold, Don was gracious enough to say, sure, we're just starting this series of projects. We've gotten funded. I do have a paid research assistant, uh, but we could always use the extra help. Come on board. So after a couple of weeks of working with Don on his project, uh, he called me in and said, uh, you know, Russ, you, you really have this strong interest in psychology, why don't you become an honor student and I'll be your honors supervisor and you can do your thesis with us. Uh, at the time, Don was studying hyperactive, then called hyperkinetic children, and he was looking at objective ways of measuring the extent to which they were hyperactive and inattentive uh, using a playroom model uh, where we would put the kids in a room and there was a one-way mirror and we would take various recordings of their behavior while they were in the room. So he was comparing hyperactive with non-hyperactive kids, but he was also beginning to take a look at the impact of medication on these objective measures. At the time, children were being given Ritalin and Don wanted to know just how effective was this medication and what was it doing to their behavior. And I was fascinated by this idea of studying drug effects on behavior rather than on some, you know, uh, let's say a primary physical condition uh, in medicine. And uh, so I decided, okay, I'll do my honors thesis with Don and I will uh, study the effects of reinforcement on hyperactive children's behavior. And I set up a nice paradigm and went on to do my honors thesis with him, demonstrating that we could modify to some extent the behavior of these children in the playroom with certain kinds of reinforcers. And uh, went on and gave my thesis, published my thesis, and at that point applied to graduate school, where I went to Bowling Green State University, mainly because Don had a former student there named Douglas Ullman. And Doug was also studying developmental disabilities, though he was more interested in intellectual disability uh, than I was. But uh, I said, okay, I'll apply. And I got into several graduate programs, but they offered a really nice uh, support for me through an NIMH fellowship. And so I went to Bowling Green and had a nice uh, fellowship for the three years that I was there 
uh, along with, of course, my GI Bill. So, so that's how I got into the field. It's, it's really just a, a story of wanting to do some extra work, finding somebody who was very open to that possibility, was very paternal, gave me a lot of guidance, very supportive, almost a father-like figure in my early career, uh, and focusing on something that I found fascinating, which was the objective measurement of children's behavior, also studying hyperactive children who were these kids who are highly dysregulated, uh, very difficult to manage, and trying to figure out just uh, what, what are their symptoms, what's going on here, uh, does this medication being used to manage them help them, uh, and the more I got into it, the more I liked it, the further I studied, the more I got into the research literature, I wrote several reviews of the literature, particularly on medication effects during my early years of graduate training, did my master's thesis on ADHD and its objective measurement, uh, at that time again, hyperactive children, went on then to do my dissertation on drug effects on these objective measures, basically taking Don's research and extending it even further using about 20 to 30 different measures of child behavior, including uh, their measures of their working memory, their playtime, their impulse control, activity level, and so on. <clears throat> After that, wound up at the Oregon Health Sciences University for my internship training, where I met up with a uh, friend of mine, not then a friend, but we became very close friends, and that was Charles Cunningham. Uh, Chuck was studying uh, language-delayed children and also children with mental retardation, but mainly language-delayed children and studying their mother-child interactions. And I was captivated by the methods he was using to objectively measure the interactions between moms and their kids. And I said, you know, I've just come off of my dissertation doing medication studies of ADHD children with objective measures. Let's do a study together using that methodology for studying mother-child and family behavior and my methodology for testing the effects of medication and placebos, and we wound up doing a series of studies during my internship together, published all of them, and uh, showing very clearly that the medication had very positive effects on mother-child interactions. This was the first demonstration that the idea at the time about ADHD being caused by poor parenting and upbringing was wrong. We showed that the parent's behavior, which was to some extent disrupted, overly commanding, controlling, was in fact a reaction to the child's behavior. And when we put the children on and off medication and placebo without the parents knowing which days they were on and off, we showed clear medication effects, not just on the child's ADHD symptoms, but also on the way they interacted with their parents and as a consequence of those changes in child behavior, we saw marked changes in the parent's behavior. Essentially, the parents became normal, clearly showing that the direction of effects in that study or in that research was from child to parent and not the other way around as psychoanalysis or even social learning theory would have had us believe at the time that it was the parent's fault. Uh, so that's how I got involved uh, in ADHD. The more research I did, the easier it was to stay with it. Uh, the more I could learn about the research literature, I was better off specializing than continuing to skip around as many psychologists do and study other topics. Uh, and also, I just found it very interesting. Now, it turned out, as I finished my graduate training, that what I was studying was actually something that had been in my family and helped me to understand the behavior of some of my siblings, particularly my fraternal twin brother, Ron, as well as other relatives who had ADHD clearly uh, and whose children went on to be diagnosed with ADHD as well. Uh, so there was a side benefit for me, but it wasn't the reason I got into the field. The reason I got in was to go to graduate school, specialize in something, get the extra credit, and I just happened to meet a very influential psychologist who went on to become the editor of the Journal of Abnormal Psychology, that was Don Ruth, 
that is the Journal of Abnormal Child Psychology, let me clarify that, uh, and who was very prominent at the time in the field of hyperactive children, subsequently renamed, of course, uh, ADHD. So uh, that's my early career. And of course, the, the more uh, you dig a hole and the d deeper you dig it, the more it's better off that you stay there than go dig uh, another hole or specialize in another disorder. So uh, that's my story, everybody. And I, uh, I hope that uh, it answers those questions, those queries from my subscribers. And I hope you'll tune in again for more videos on this channel. Thanks so much.